Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. I'm with the University of Ottawa Laboratory for Paleoclimatology. I'm going to discuss in detail this report that just came out called the Arctic Report Card Update for 2016. It just came out in December of 2016, so just recently. And just Google it and have a look at it. There's loads of detailed information on what's going on in the Arctic. So I've done a couple of videos just released um, on looking at real-time data. So now this is looking at the detailed report. Um, I think it's a NOAA report. So just, um, okay, so there's all these menus down the side, so I'll discuss these menus uh, sequentially. So first, um, in the executive summary, there's one of these word clouds of the whole report, and this is actually quite interesting. I recommend that you spend a few minutes here. You know, so it's all, obviously the report's about the Arctic. Ice is, is a huge factor, sea ice. Uh, looking at the data, the extent dropping, you know, how it affects the climate, the tundra, you know, temperatures in the Arctic, September record. There's all kinds of really good stuff here. Jennifer Francis makes it over here looking, connecting the jet streams to the Arctic. You know, just have a look at all of these terms. You know, albedo is the reflectivity, which is dropping, causing temperature amplification. Um, May and June, that would be the spring snow cover um, dropping, actually at an even faster rate than the ice, and this is very much underreported. Um, the carbon cycle, the conditions, uh, the, the biology in there, the different region. So have a look at those words. If you don't know any of those words, just look them up. It'll really help your understanding of the Arctic. And this is in the executive summary. Now, now in terms of the uh, surface air temperature, um, so obviously the temperatures have been off the charts in the Arctic, extreme over the entire basin. Um, the Arctic temperatures continue to increase at double the rate of the global temperature increase. Um, this is, I believe, um, they define the Arctic in as anything higher than 60 degrees, I believe. Um, since the turn of the last century, we've had a three and a half degree Celsius increase in the Arctic. And this is actually more like three times faster than the global average, certainly two times faster, higher than two times, two and a half times faster. You know, this number of two times faster should really be broken down with latitude. So above 60, above 70, above 80, above 90, because above, above 90, you're in space. <laughs> um, because above those different latitudes, the rate of rise is much, much higher. And it needs to really be broken down into that. But you never really see that done. So, you know, I just focus on figures here. So these are Arctic land stations north of 60, showing the... Temp the global temperature change up to now with the spike um, this year. So approaching one degree Celsius above this average here. Um, and then if you take the average here, going to where we are now, um, so we're about one degree plus, this is about minus one, that's over the two degree, which is a Paris number. We're already there, base, you know, very close to. And in the Arctic, of course, the warming is higher. So this is north of 60. So the rise, you know, of a degree here to two degrees, this is where the doubling idea comes in. Um, and if you look at the temp look at the results over, this is temperature. Um, these are seasonal anomalies. So this is um, October to December. Um, and the red is six degrees Celsius higher than normal. Um, the blue, and okay, so you can see that this is in October to December. You know, these areas here are warmer than normal, but this is in the winter, January to March. We get these huge, really large, this whole region here, the vast region of the Arctic Ocean, has a temperature anomaly of six degrees higher, over six degrees higher in this entire region. And then you get into uh, the spring, April to June, and then the summer. So the most of the warming, as you can see, is occurring in, in January through March. And the sea ice is, um, this is having a huge, 
num doing a huge number on the sea ice. Now, interestingly, in November, December this year, we had huge temperature anomalies. So the ice isn't forming properly. So at, you know, if we get this type of anomaly come January, February, March, we're gonna see the sea ice being totally crushed at the same time that Trump totally crushes, you know, climate science in, in the US. Uh, is my big concern if, if we allow him to, to do this. Um, going back to, okay, so this is some reanalysis data. This is January to March 2016. So what it's showing is, it's showing that these, um, these are geopotential heights. So what it, this is, um, so what we have is we're getting we have higher pressures, so we're getting these lower pressures here are where it's getting extremely warm. This is the 850 millibar, so it's getting extremely, sorry, extremely cold where these lower pressure areas, hot air expands. So where it's hot, that pushes the um, height of the pressure. So if it's, uh, you know, if it's cold, the air is compressed, it's closer to the surface. This is 850, so it's about one and a half kilometers high. Um, and uh, so we're seeing these, um, the, these uh, different, um, what we're seeing is the polar vortex, which would normally be, of, I've talked about in previous videos, is basically split. We're getting the cold continent and we're getting the warm ocean. Okay, I don't know if I explained that too well. Um, what we can see here, okay, so this is now June to August. So this is in the summer and these are the, sea level pressure anomalies. So what we're seeing is at sea level, we're getting really low pressures relative to the previous most years. And this is relative to what? Um, it would be relative to probably at the climatology, which is probably 30 years, um, but it says most years in the previous decade. So maybe it's just relative to the previous decade. Um, normally it's relative to a 30 year average, say 1980 to 2010. Uh, but what we're seeing here is the, the pressures are much lower in the Arctic. This is what we're starting to see. I talked about this in a previous very video. When there's high pressures here, you get the Beaufort gyre coming this way and then the transpolar drift, which is forcing the ice out in an Arctic blue ocean event. Um, you'll have the oceans will be much warmer than the continents. So the hot air rises over the oceans, you get low pressure in the center of the Arctic Ocean, therefore the air is moving in, deflecting to the right, so you get a counterclockwise gyre. So the Beaufort gyre switches direction, the transpolar drift switches direction, it pulls in warm water from the Arctic Ocean, from, from the surrounding oceans, the Atlantic Ocean, and it leads to prolonging, extending, first of all, it extends the length of time that there's no sea ice in the summer, and then it extends it, you know, from year to year. There's more and more the duration of no sea of no sea ice is longer and longer until we get locked into an ice-free state. Okay, so this is, so this is uh, like I say, you can get all of this stuff from this report. Um, next, we look at terrestrial snow cover. Now, people don't talk about this so much, but this is. Uh, vital mostly in the spring we're losing the soak snow cover we're getting record lows of snow cover and therefore the surface is dark the albedo so the albedo drops you get more solar radiation absorbed on the surface and therefore you get the heating of the arctic you get this arctic temperature amplification from the albedo so this is monthly snow cover for land grade higher than 60 degrees north um, from the NOAA climate data record, snow chart record. Uh, Rutgers also has great information on snow cover. So this is April, May, and June. This is the North American Arctic, the black. The Eurasian Arctic is the red. So April, not much change in North America, some general trend down in Eurasia. But in May, you can start seeing the trends go down. And in June, you start seeing them drop significantly. So in June, snow cover in the Arctic, the drop is about 22% of the area per decade, um, which causes 
more warming in the Arctic than actual loss of sea ice. It's almost double the rate. The, the, the sea ice area is, the, the, the snow cover area is dropping at almost double the rate that the sea ice extent is dropping. Um, this shows uh, the duration of snow cover. Um, the, um, so in days, this is the change. Snow cover duration in days departures. So it's different from the 1998 to 2010 mean. For This is in the fall and this is in the spring. So in the fall, there's some loss of snow cover. The blues is a gain of snow cover. But in the spring, there's a huge loss of snow cover. Everything's negative down here in these red areas. It's a loss of 50%, 50 days um, in, the, in the spring of snow cover. So snow cover, so, so the snow's leaving, you know, a month, over a month, almost two months earlier in this region. And, and these regions here, the brown, this is a month roughly. So the snow's leaving earlier than before. So the snow, that's the snow coverage area. This is the snow depth anomaly. So this is um, March, April, March, April, May, June. So the, the depth is actually increasing in some areas, March, April, the red areas. Uh, okay. And uh, sorry, the red areas, it's decreasing. The blue areas, it's increasing. So it's decreasing here and here, increasing a bit there. And this is because the Arctic is warming, but it's still below zero. So there's more snow in some regions initially. Um, and here too, the blue areas, but you know, the red starts creeping up and creeping up and the red takes over here. So this is the snow depth, uh, but you really have to look at the, it's the area or the extent that causes the lo loss of albedo. So here, 1980 to 20 to present day, um, this is in this is in May, this is in June, and this is the, the blue is September sea ice extent tracking. So we're losing snow cover quicker than the sea ice extent is dropping, and this is another view of the sea ice extent. Okay, so. People don't talk so much about the snow cover. Everybody's looking at the sea ice. Well, the snow cover in the spring is just as important because it sets up the vicious uh, melting cycle of the ice in the summer. Now, sea ice melting doesn't raise sea level because it's floating ice. But the ice on land, on Greenland, there's huge amounts, raises sea level when it melts. So let's have a look here. So um, again, just diagrams here. So. This is 2012 was a year where we had minimum sea ice and we had maximum surface um, melt on Greenland. In fact, you know, in this period here, almost all of Greenland was undergoing melting, um, over 90%. Okay, so this was a very unusual year. Now this year, although it's second lowest sea ice extent cover, the areas around Greenland haven't been as cold, so the melting has been higher than the long-term medium but it's still within the plus or minus two sigma variation. Um, anyway, we're getting, we're getting it, but it's starting earlier. Um, and this shows you where the melting um, is, the melting in terms of, you know, uh, percentages, how high it reached. Now, if you go to surface mass balance, this is data at the equilibrium line. Okay, the equilibrium line is where the, the snowfall is equal to the snow melt over a year. So a cross section of the line through different elevation shows that the zero was the equilibrium line originally. So this is data through the years. So as the years proceed, we're losing more and more. Um, the elevation is the equilibrium line is, is changing. We're losing more and more ice. Um, this shows the um, ablation anomalies, so the loss of ice on the surface of Greenland. This year, relative to the 2011 to 2015 average anomaly, okay, so here this year, but if you take it relative to the 61 to 90 average, then these areas here represent much more ablation, uh, much more, you know, especially up in these regions, you know, huge amounts of loss of ice in these regions compared to the baseline. The overall ice mass loss 
I believe this is, yeah, this is from Grace Satellite, Gravity Anomaly.